Well, got to apologise, that last message, probably from Cooper Petey. We're going to go to the church and we didn't do it. We're going to save it for another day, all right? We're going to go back that way, so we might uh, slot it in later. Well, where are we today? We have just driven just over 100 k's. I think it was 150 k's, come to this place. Um, um, Anita, I think it is. Anita's um, bush camp. Look at that. Perla. Apart from these flies, a few flies around, but uh, the road's just over that way. There is a train which has just travelled not long ago from that way through to that way. But other than that, good wide open country. Gotta love it. And it's, uh, it is in the process of being a gravel pit. They are going to be doing a lot of, um, looks like resealing along the uh, is a Stewart Highway. So uh, there's quite a few little lay-by areas that we've got here that are starting to be filled up as gravel pits so looks good good spot got a bit of firewood there make get a fire going check out a good night sky so what you doing Dee? Just trying to see our um our shank for tomorrow. And where are we gonna cook it? We're gonna throw this baby into a 12 volt oven while we're traveling the next 200 k's to our next destination. Hey, good morning YouTubers. Welcome back. Sweet as RVing. We are um up this morning. Nita's um I think it was bush camp. And uh well yeah I'm trying to sort of look enthusiastic and get flies away at the same time <laughs> and talk about flies i better keep them away from this judy's been busy she's gone and done a uh, lamb shank um this is for our travels um over the next um oh a couple of hours um, we're leaving here and heading um up the other side of marla uh, hopefully there's a couple little bush camps there we're going to look at but uh we've done a um a lamb shank down here so um the big lamb shanks i braised it last night on the fire so uh, she's all outside done. Dude's gonna put some mushrooms and some potatoes and some onions. And we had a little bit of red wine. So uh, that's uh, marinating in the red wine right now. And I'm gonna put it in our 12 volt camp oven. Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, we got it from Kickass. this one. I, I, we'll go and check that one out, eh? So uh, we'll uh, put the lid on, keep the flies away, get it in there before the dingoes come out and want a piece of it. And uh, we'll show you. Righty hey, we'll see whether we can get it all in here one-handed and uh, keep sort of some control of the camera going here. So there you go, there's my little uh, oven in the back of the trailer, a kick-ass travel oven. It's 12 volt. Here we go. Let's try this without spilling. I'm going to red, red wine down my arm. Oh, oh no, it's not going to work. We'll try that again. We'll set the camera up. Righty hey, ho. We'll try this. Now the dimensions of the roasting dish are very close to the dimensions of the oven. So obviously um, overhanging tin foil and stuff that we've got there is going to affect the tolerances, but there you go. All in. Close that up. Like so. Flip it around to the timer. Goes for 120 minutes. We just reset it once that's all finished. And then you got your temperature on this side here, so 
that's maxed out up to there. I found out so just over halfway was pretty good for keeping pies like roasty hot. So uh, we're just going to simmer this one slowly. So yeah, we'll see what it looks like when we reach our destination and it's tucker time. Hey afternoon, coming to you from, uh, I think it's Mount John's camp, I think that might be Mount John's behind me there, and uh, sorry for the, uh, the attire but the flies are absolutely thick, thick as buggery. So not only have I got my head net on but I've pulled out my secret weapon which is the side awning and I've got the insect mesh over that so later on we can come out and enjoy um, a drinky and watching the sun go down which will be ahead of me here and uh, not get too bothered and then later on the, uh, the sunset as it disappears the flies will disappear I'll pack that all up and uh, we'll be all ready to go again so no it's a great little spot a little cautious of your um, underground here uh, when you're if, if it's wet but uh, a huge massive expansive area way down the back I mean this just re reminds me coming across the Northern Territory um, way back in our first few issues so um, we are 100 k's from the Northern Territory and um, as I say, I'm just sitting down here just doing a bit of research to find out uh, where I'm going to stay so uh, the actual border itself is not looking too bad might be something quite nice to be camped right on the border um, be in one time zone and another I guess but other than that um, we've got those shanks on which we'll show you um, later on around tucker time uh, Jude's just doing a little bit of work obviously without the uh, the annoying flies and a bit of the cool in the van and um, yeah we'll uh, partake in a, a little bit of uh, evening festivities um, I've got some firewood left there so I uh, might be able to have the fire going as well and uh, all good tip it all down me here we go Follow me over to the presentation table. Mm. Okay. The welding gloves are getting hot. Right, you ready? Let's cop a load of that. What do you think? Smell a vision. Yep, absolutely. Smells great and right. it looks great. Without a further ado. Dinner time, yay! Good morning. Well, we're just leaving this uh, Mount John's um, rest area, and uh, yeah, what a great spot. Good night's uh, stargazing last night. Um, flies died away, which was good. Other than that, my little, uh, my little concoction on the back of the trailer worked a treat. And uh, just got to close the door. A couple other things were off, and uh, heading just up the road, 100 odd k's. Going to have a look at uh, the border, hopefully. So uh, here we go. Well, I'm on top of the world, but it ain't Uluru, no, it's a gravel pit again, and it's, well, I'm still in South Australia. Jude and I had a, a little, little discussion, we thought, well, if we go to the South Australia, New, uh, the Northern Territory border, there's about six car parks there, which we could probably, hopefully, find, but I've got to think about, yeah, being, you know, sandwiched in, and when you can come to places like this, yeah, it's a stinking bloody gravel pit. It's been hot and uh, there was warning about mice, so uh, hopefully I don't pay for it. Uh, van down there, getting the last bit of solar going in there. There's the gravel pit part, awesome. And boom, the sun is going down and I think we're going to get a pretty good painted sky tonight. There's some beautiful cloud patterns. So that's where we are, change of plans. It's a gravel pit just shy of the, uh, the border. So uh, I don't know what it was, I, I saw ears range or something like that come up, so uh, but we're not on that yet, but it was a yeah, stone's throw away. So, loving it, here we are tonight, and then definitely Northern Territory border tomorrow. We'll wake up and tell you we're off. No, we will transmit the next one at the border. Bye ya! Well, there you go. Woohoo! Sadly, the sun's not giving this side all the uh, the glory, but that is the Northern Territory side. I'm in South Australia still, 
but uh, yeah, we made it. Oh, excuse my excitement. I do love the Northern Territory. It's uh, yeah, something about it. Just it's, it's a spicky spot to be. So um, yeah, nice little quick jaunt from um, that last stop down the way. That was beautiful. Um, good uh, sunset last night as you've seen and a lovely sunrise and then uh, yeah, we got here early it's just after eight o'clock in the morning so it's a little nippy but um, oh, yeah just so pumped to be here so we just got to go back up to the well up to the roadhouse we'll top off with some fuel and we'll continue the rest of this big old journey but uh, in the meantime we'll uh, have a look at the uh, the departing side over here which is uh, South Australia but now I'm in Northern Territory. Ha, go figure. <laughs> so welcome to South Australia. So uh, what a blast. So the um, the pub up here, I think it's Cougar or something. Jude will pop it up here. But yeah, it's the uh, the first roadhouse pub uh, in uh, the Northern Territory as we're entering and it's the last one as you're exiting too. So, And there was a bit of a camp spot. Looks like there's plenty, uh, plenty of spots back there. But uh, obviously a lot of people have probably gone this morning too. So, uh, play catch up. Boom. We've made it. Jude and I have made it to Uluru. How's that? Yeah, it doesn't need too much introduction. Here's Rock, Uluru, uh, in the Northern Territory. Um, Alice Springs, I think, is over that way somewhere, and uh, well, I don't know. There's a big wild bunch of rocks over here somewhere. I don't know whether it's the uh, Katajukas or the uh, uh, the Olgas or something like that. But uh, yeah, this is my first impression of getting up here and seeing that baby over there. We had a little test on the way in. Jude will show the the footage of that one. Um, I think it was Connor, you know, Connor. That's kind of like, oh look, we've seen it, we've seen it. But I knew damn well. There was one there just to test you, but it was a decent size as well. Incredible rock. But that's the big one. So uh, we're down here at a little place called, uh, I think it's um, Sandy's, Sandy's Rest, I think it is. So 24 hour little park up there. Gonna um, just get ourselves settled here. And then tomorrow we've only got about a, I think it's like a 26K drive straight into um, Yalara, I think they call it, which is the center where the uh, Al Caravan Park is. We'll go from there. So we're here in a prime spot for, for sunset, I think. It's going over that way. So I guess uh, there'll be a few here taking photos tonight, looking by the footsteps and the four wheel drive photos around here. So uh, I'll head back down to the, the van and uh, get out of the flies and the heat and uh, be ready for later on tonight. At our little meeting place. It is Judy's birthday today. Happy birthday, Judy. Thank you. And this has been um, waiting for over a year. 12 months. 12 Kids months. Bought it for me for yeah. my birthday. Last birthday, uh, she got a, um, a helicopter trip over Uluru. And uh, she's been patiently waiting for this moment. So uh, we've got a reasonable day, a little bit of uh, overcast. There's a little bit of cloud around, but it's a beautiful, warm day. And um, yeah, so we've just traveled from where we were, Sandy Views, I think it was, over here so we can um, do this uh, helicopter flight and get that out of the way. And then, yeah, tomorrow we'll probably uh, yeah, we'll walk, go around. walk around it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, um, yeah, we'll get an inspection from the air to see how far away and then uh, hopefully we'll still do it tomorrow, eh? Yeah. All right, so stay tuned. A little bit of uh, helicopter action coming up.
Well, believe it or not, to tonight, sweet as RVing and all the flies have made it to Uluru. Here's Rock. First car parking spot, viewing area of it, and it's pretty amazing. We were pretty flat out yesterday with um, trying to get into um, Yulara and um, get to our helicopter and uh, do that trip but uh, that was pretty awesome hopefully it all comes through okay there and you're happy with it and um, yeah then we've been had, had to go away set up come back again and uh, go and do this uh, this walk around the uh, Uluru so we'll do the walk today disappear again come back again and go and do um, Karajuka so uh, yeah pretty pretty nice day gonna be about 28 degrees so uh, we better get our, uh, our dags going because um, yeah, we don't want to get in too hot while we're out there. Right, well we're just starting our base walk of Uluru and uh, where we're parked, um, this was actually the start way back um, prior to 2019 where you used to be able to walk up Uluru and man it is one steep little climb. I don't know whether you can see it with the sun and things but uh, I think we must start out here somewhere and there's a faint line going up there you up this way here yes yeah, so they walked up through there um i believe there was um chains and uh, you just grabbed the chain and you just walked your way up so stopped way back in 2019 i think october sometime when um we were just allowed to walk around literally so that's where we're going to start now it's pretty incredible you you walk around and you see sort of one shape, one colour and one big hole or something like that and then you come around another corner and you're just uh, wowed by just wicked big structures, holes, waterfall every area where there should be waterfalls this is a big scallop inside of the hill pretty awesome It's amazing how you can be walking out in the open, it's dry, there's very little vegetation and um, it's pretty hot and then you come into these little oases. Obviously this is a really big catchment area where um, a big waterfall comes down, lots of pockets and there's obviously what would be a, uh, a creek down here when, um, when there's plenty of water. Obviously a great place for the trees to start to grow and man you get into here, it's so cool smells amazing and you've got all these beautiful trees around giving you some nice shelter so yeah you get a bit of everything as you walk around look at this i don't see that oh yeah there's the rock over in here and you've got all these trees about it's so nice and cool so you can just work out that when the uh, aboriginals are around here and it's getting really hot and you could probably just move around this whole rock and have the ideal temperate climate as you go around. It's interesting to point out as you walk around Uluru there are areas which are marked off as sensitive areas so no filming no photography so uh, I respect that um, so there was a when, when we come out of that chasm there along the road to really about here that's been all no photography but yeah it's pretty cool how I don't know whether you can see it here, but this rock just <laughs> reminds me of a, a big loaf of bread that's had a, a bread cutter on it. And then the bees are dealt to it, put all these honeycombs in it. That is wicked, eh? Gotta be pretty awesome. So that's the first thing one you come to when you're going anti-clockwise. I'm going a really nice, fantastic pool. And I think that's when I see a lot of people doing this when it's pouring down rain. And I see these massive big waterfall gushing and rushing, I think that's the one. It's gotta be it. So awesome. Look at the redness. Can you see it? 
chest. It's a nice little valley, that one. Anyway, we're not too far from the wagon now. Just had to put that in because I thought it was all over. <laughs> All right, we made it back to the van. How's that? With the roo in the background, we have conquered the 10.6 kilometers around. And I tell you what, I think it would have been easier listening to that helicopter. It was definitely easier yesterday. But no, it was a good walk, good flat walk around. Um, yeah, as I say, plenty of water. And uh, just the soles of my feet are feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit tired. I mean, she twisted her ankle a couple of days ago, so it's just uh, flaring up a little bit there now. But apart from that, uh, she did well, did, did very good. So, Uluru, check. Well, another rare moment. This uh, Uluru has forced me and Jude to get up early. And we're the only people here. It's not known for its sunrises this spot it's a sunset spot but uh, we're on our way to Katajuka down the other end and couldn't resist checking it out so uh, that's a brief one Jude's got some nice photos so uh, we'll go with that on to Katajuka we go Karaduka, here we are. Um, we're only going to do the little walk. Uh, the Valley of the Wind. I mean, I'm standing on this side of the van, out of the way of the wind, because uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty blustery. Might be sheltered in the Valley of the Winds. I don't know, but uh, this looks good enough for me. I mean, I still got a little bit of a, a sore blister under my foot. Jude's uh, ankle's not too bad, but we're just going to take it cautiously. So I'm uh, going to shoot down the gorge. I'll let you know when we're in the gorge and what it's called. But uh, yeah, Karajuka, the Olgas, um, pretty impressive structure. It's pretty good. And of course, it's cold and it's a bit windy. We're on the uh, the other side. The sun's coming up on the other side. That'll be really, really nice. We're on this side and it's a little cold and nippy. So be prepared if you're up for an early morning. Anyway, on our way. Pretty incredible. Got a nice little quiet spot here. It's not so windy, but if my camera will do it, it does protest a bit. But check out those walls, man, straight up. They're wicked. And then we zoom around, and that's nearly the end of the trail of the Walpa Gorge at Katajuka. Pretty cool, eh? It's a good spot. It's, a, it's not a bad walk. Just take it, take it easy. It's a little undulating and a few little loose rocks around. But other than that, it's a, it's a nice, easy trip to do um, to go and see a pretty awesome site. As I say, whoop, just moved and look at that. Feel the difference in the wind. Um, and we're just going to go up to the end here where uh, the exit is blocked, but uh, still quite a sight. And a nice little trickle of water coming down here too. So. Uh, it yeah, must be uh, just running down here when it rains. Wicked.
Well, there you have it. Wapa Gorge. Pretty awesome. And uh, now that we're back down here with a bit of sunlight, feels good. Up there was pretty chilly. <laughs> and uh, there's heaps of people going up there now too. So early morning's good. So uh, goodbye to the Olgas or Karajuku, Karajuka. And uh, we're gonna call it an early one today. Go back to the park.